Hi, good morning everyone. I hope you are well. Um, this is just an additional um, lecture that I'm um, recording. Um, it will assist you in your scheduling. Um, with everything now being postponed slightly, I'm sure you will be able to um, incorporate this into your tasks um, and um, will assist you in any scheduling or understanding understanding how scheduling works. So I'm just going to run through it quickly to try and keep the video as um, small as possible. And you will also, uh, I'll also make um, this video available or the slides available so you can go through that. I'll also post some additional uh, material so that you can actually look at um, uh, scheduling methods and so on, um, which will assist you in, um, in this manner. So I'm just going to run through it quickly. Um, so basically this is like I said an additional scheduling video so it's based on a um, book called um, construction methods um, uh, by Cook and Williams so and I'm doing uh, this little lecture from chapters 8 and 9 so I'm just gonna run through it and then you will be able to to assist yourself um, going forward Okay, so what we've got is um, basically just the introduction. Something that I just want to highlight here is you will see in table 8.2 to note there is different uh, scheduling methods. So you have your planning stage or stages, your design stage, pre-contract stage and your con contract stage. So you have different scheduling methods for all of these um, at different stages. So um, currently for your task you're looking at your pre-tender stage or your planning uh, stage so you will either do this these two types of scheduling um, your pre-contract uh, stage is usually when you go out on contract uh, then you have a schedule that your contractor usually base his um, contract on but it's not final so you will have a master program which includes your design phases up to the completion of the project so basically stages one to six and then you have your target program specific targets to to be met for instance uh, one section of a building has to be complete before tenants can go in, that type of thing. Then you have subcontractor programs um, and then you have uh, procurement, um, your procurement program. Okay, so all of these are um, pre-contract. So um, your, con um, your contractor um, during the tender phase might look at some of these um, tenders and so on, but then uh, when he's appointed and the contract is not yet signed, some of these um, programs will be um, enhanced. So, and then you have your contract um, programs, which is your stage programs, your short-term short programs, and then your ASPL program, which is basically at the end of the project or as things change, your program is current, uh, constantly being updated and so on. So I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what programs they are so for your task you're basically looking at these two uh, programs um, and um, which incorporates your construction period but that's usually only a one liner or so to show the contract period will be three months six months or so so you don't have detail up to the point of where your foundations is when the roof is going up when the windows goes in and that type of thing Okay, so you keep that in the back of your mind. And then uh, I just highlighted the different stages. You will see something interesting. The extract here shows the SACP CMP. So that's the Council for Construction Project Managers. And you will see it's exactly the same as the QS and Architects uh, stages. So interesting to note. Okay, so here's an example of your pro project master schedule. So you will have your... Um, your design phase, or you might have your different phases here, uh, your tender phase, your construction phase, and then your occupation. Just remember, this is now an extract from the book, so they're not working on our six stages, but you can definitely um, use these types of um, schedules or, or items in your different stages as you need. Okay, so uh, this is just a nice example of that. So you can see what they've done here. They use a negative um, uh, dates or timeline uh, up to the point where the contract 
actually starts or where the contractor gets onto site. So just note that uh, it's not necessary for you to do that. Um, that's usually um, in a um, in a more advanced programs you can actually use negative dates like this. Okay. So here's an example of an actual um, um, master schedule that we did for a tender uh, at the Polynomi Hospital. It was in 2015 uh, that we did this um, schedule. So you can just um, get get an idea of this. So ideally, uh, when you start out, is you need to list your uh, different stages, and then you have to look at what you are going to do underneath each stage. So it's up to you how that uh, is put together. Okay, so um, just another concept that uh, that you can look at is lead towns. I'm not going to go into that. You can look um, at this uh, in your um, in the slides that I'm going to post. Uh, work breakdown structures um, is basically goals that you will set for yourself. It's not that important for you to know about this. You can go through that just different levels of work breakdown structures so you can read through this work and uh, then you have additional stages and that you can keep in mind this is just to assist you in the um, actual planning stages so i'm just going to skip through these slides you can go through them um, it's all just to assist you in how um, the thinking goes if you do some planning okay so pre-contract planning Okay, I'm just going to skip through this. The contract planning, etc. Okay, so this is just an explanation of what each item is. So you can go through this at your own le leisure. Okay, so the main thing is whenever you do planning is to apply your mind. And that's the one thing that we as humans do. We plan ahead. We run different scenarios ahead of time. Of how things will work the same as what you do with your design is you think of your occupants how they're going to use um, the building that you're designing so the same thing with scheduling is you you plan and think of how things are going to unroll how the design is going to be influenced what type of people you're going to work with that type of thing okay so uh, I'm just going to skip through these slides I want to get to chapter 9 um so you can you're more than welcome to go through all of these um slides okay so to, um chapter nine the thing that i want to get to is that you've got you've got different um ways of presenting your um your schedule so you've got bar charts link bar charts arrow diagrams uh, precedence diagrams line uh uh, of balance diagrams, time change. Um, it's just interesting to know. What we're going to look at is linked bar charts. It's the easiest to um, to convey the message to your client and um, for you to understand. Uh, arrow diagrams is just um, the inner workings. Um, that's more advanced uh, for the construction managers. Usually, um, your uh, where you um, create your critical path and so forth. Okay, so this is typically how your different bar charts looks um, and you have your different connections. So you can just go through these um, and um, just note that there's different way of linking your, your different items. So you might have a finished start. Um, this is all going to be explained in the next slides um, is you've got your finished start items is so um, whenever item is done, the next item starts. But then you have scheduling um, allowed. So whenever a design, for instance, if the architects finished up to a certain point, um, the engineers can st start doing their designs. So you have a bit of um, leeway that you can apply. So you don't have to have the whole design done and only then um, the the design from the engineer start. So you can save a bit of time by uh, starting your design earlier. So this is just why you have this different linkages. So you've got your start to start um, with delay or without delay. Uh, so start to start is just basically when the one item star starts, the other one can start as well. 
uh, finish to finish is when this one is finished the other one should be finished as well then you've got your start to um, start to finish so whenever this um, one starts the other one can um, um, can finish or whenever this one starts the other one should be finished that type of connection so all just for noting for this stage uh, for you but it's worthwhile to just note that whenever you do your um, your scheduling the most important thing for you from this chapter is basically your design um, methods or developing your bar chart so you would list your items first then you would um, schedule the time periods and then you would link um, them accordingly so those are that is the main um, steps that you go through whenever you do your your scheduling okay so and then advanced advantages of bar charts you can just go through that uh, why we use them and so forth like I said this is just an additional video for to assist you in your um, in your tasks and also to just to assist you in whenever you get into practice so uh, just go through these um, to assist you in doing your actual work okay Okay, so I'm just going to skip through the rest. I think um, most of the other items uh, uh, will be a little bit uh, more advanced. Like for instance, your arrow diagrams is not important. So I'm just going to skip through all of these um, slides. And um, you can have a look at this, but this is not that important. Just note that if you do need to develop your um, your critical path or prioritize your items uh, that the, uh, the project managers and the QSS at many, uh, at many stages do actually go through all of this uh, to um, get the optimum uh, design going. So thank you very much and we'll talk again.